Hi, welcome to another Unity tutorial and in this video we're going to spawn our little fishies and have them swim around. So sit back, enjoy and I'll see you in a second. Okay, so we're back inside our Visual Studios or whatever you're using to edit your code and we're going to add our fish today, we're going to spawn fish and we're going to have them swim around. So we're going to add a couple of variables into our AI spawner that we were playing about with last time. Okay, so I've added in enable spawner, and this is a ball, so I'm just going to have a little tick box on our, each of our AI groups. And then down here I've added another header and I've called it main settings and I've got the private um, underscore enable spawner. Uh, so exactly the same how we did the other ones. You know, we've got a public up here that is read only and it gets the value from a private that we serialize so we can edit in the inspector. Okay, now we're going to add a new method for our invoke repeating. Basically, this is going to run every um, whatever seconds you have in the spawn timer and it will say, okay, check, um, am I going to spawn anything? And then it will wait and have an amount of time and then it will run again and say, hey, am I going to spawn anything? And it's just a loop that keeps on going forever and ever and ever and ever. And you can um, cancel the invoke repeating and then start it again. But in this case, I don't see the need to do it because we'll have logic inside our invoke repeating that will stop us from spawning whenever we need to. All right, so in my start, I've put here invoke repeating and I'm calling my method spawn NPC. See this bit here, this basically is saying when is my invoke repeating going to start. So even though the start is saying, hey, start this invoke repeating for spawn NPC, it's saying start half a second after I'm telling you to start. And then the spawn timer is saying every uh, whatever time you put in here, run this invoke repeating again. So that, this is like the wait until you start it again. And this is when you'll start it the first time. Okay, down here, I've got, this is the same name as here, otherwise, you know, I won't find it. So, I've got my um, void spawn NPC, and it's a bit of code. Don't let it put you off. Don't be worried. It's actually quite easy. So, once again, we're looping through our AI groups. So, we get the count of how many we have, and then we're going to say, um, I start at zero, and if I is less than the total number, and then we've got plus plus. So, we're going to basically increment through our groups. Now you need to check, see remember at the top we added in this new, where are you hiding? We added in this ball for enable spawner. Now we're going to have a tick box to make sure that it is ticked otherwise we won't spawn. And also we need to make sure that our group has a prefab to spawn. If it doesn't have a prefab to spawn we'll get some errors. So it's saying that the ball is true and the prefab is not null. Okay, that's that's a good bit of error handling you've got in there. Always try to stick a little bit of error handling in your code just to um, in case you have weird scenarios so we cover them. Now we've got this temp group. This is the actual game object of this um, AI object I that we're in. Because don't forget this is a list. Now we need to get the group, the game object group that it belongs to. So I'm doing a find by the name of the group. It's a little bit messy. Right, we need to have a, um, a better way. Let's put a note here, remember. We need a better way to find the game object for the AI group. Always make sure that you name your um, AI groups with a unique name. All right, now you're going to have to check to make sure um, how many children are in that game object. That's we're only spawning our NPCs in these game objects and that way um, you know that if you just do a, a child count then you're counting the NPCs. Hopefully, you know, um, it's, if you're not then we'll have to actually specifically say like tag it or something so we'll have to start tagging our NPCs and then count how many children with the tag are in the group. But for now this is good enough. We're making sure that it's less than the max total of um, NPCs that we're allowed. I've called it AI. I mean, could have called it Max NPCs, but you know, Max AI. Um, that was what we had up here, if you remember, in the last video. 
And now we're going to go through and we're going to randomly spawn um, our NPCs. Now, at this, up again here, we did have a int for, where is it, the maximum spawn amount. So you remember that we said here, maximum spawn amount is 0 to 10. Actually, if we change that to be uh, to 20, and we say leave the max AI at, so max AI at 40. We'll have more in our scene. Okay, so basically saying at any one point, whenever we spawn, we're spawning between 0 and 20 NPCs at a time. So that's a, um, that's a big number. Actually, I'll put that back down to 10. There you go. Where were we? Here we go. So um, we want to get a random number. So we want to basically say, okay, random range, 0 to the maximum number that we can spawn at a time, which is our spawn amount. We're going to go through and start spawning. And uh, there might be a better way of doing this. Probably is a better way of doing this, but this kind of works for me. So we're going to get here a number. We're going to say, okay, we're spawning three this time, and then we'll go through and we run this three times. Or if this number generated nine, we would go through and it would loop nine times because that's why we've got this y equals zero sign at zero, and then we're incrementing our y each time by one. Okay. Pretty much the same code we're always doing over and over. We're only doing the same bits of code and we're using them again in different scenarios. So we've got here a random rotation, it's called Dernian, I love that word. And I've got here um, the X, Y, Z, X, Z, Y, whatever order, I keep forgetting the order they have them in. And this is so when we're spawning our NPC um, fishes in this case are facing a random direction just to make it look a little bit more natural. And now we've got a game object for our NPC that we're spawning. This is temporary you know, every time we free. We only need to declare it in here because this is the only where it lives and then afterwards it doesn't use it anymore. So we've got here, the value of that is to instantiate the prefab and a random rotation, which is here. A random position is a method that I've just made. We're just give it a sneak peek of what's coming next. So we've got to actually now put this uh, NPC as a child of this AI group. Don't forget, you can't make it a child of this because it's just a list. You have to make it a child of the game object that we made that we derived from that. And now we're adding a component, which is a new script that we're going to make. It's called AI Move, and I've already made it. That's why I don't get an error, but we're going to make it together in a moment. And this is the script that basically controls how our NPCs move about, in our cases our fishes, and how they swim. Let's go down to our random position. Now, we've got a couple of different methods. We've got here random position, and below here you can see random waypoint. Now, random position basically just spawns a um, vector 3 randomly within our spawn area. And remember, our spawn area is what we set way at the top here in our um, global variables that we had for our AI spawner. So, where are you? Get back down here. We're saying we've got to get a random position, which is a vector 3, and that is within our x, y, z's. Hey, what's that order? x, y, z? See? Actually, it's easy to remember because it's the alphabet. Oh, my brain is not really with me today. And then we've got random position equals, and then I've put basically here, multiplying whatever we got from this value by 0.5 float. And then we're going to return this random position. And always remember that you need to, if you've got here um, this like public vector 3 random position, you need to make sure that you return, always return. So if you've got an else in here, like an if and an else, you need to make sure that both of them return something. Otherwise you'll complain that you've got um, scenarios where you don't return anything. Because here, when we're calling random position, and we've got this return, it will actually return this vector 3 here. So this will be replaced with this value that's been created randomly. Isn't that clever? I do like that. I do like this whole using, um, you put like a little bit of code in here, and then it just uses methods and other things elsewhere to keep your code nice and tidy, organized. Nice, tidy, and organized. Now this one, this random waypoint, basically goes through the waypoints that we set 
in our scene. So remember we had those boxes and we tagged them with the tag waypoint. It looks through them, counts how many we've got in our scene, and then it just randomly um, chip picks one, effectively. And then it just spits it out and returns it out. That's all this does. We can use this later on for our fishies to pick a random target and, and swim to. With me so far? I hope you're with me so far. I'm with me so far. It says my cat. It just it just came out from underneath her bed. Even though she was sleeping there, she must be trying to get away from the kids. Okay, now the last thing we're going to be editing in our AI spawner is when we go down, 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 down. We've got here a gizmo. So we're going to on draw gizmo selected, gizmos.color equals the spawn color where we set up in our global variables and then we're just going to draw a cube based on the size of our spawn area. Basically this void on draw gizmo selected is for when you're in the editor and you select on the game object or the world object that this script is attached to, it will color it in and it will show the spawn area. If you did a collider you wouldn't really need this because you would see an outline of the collider. We don't have a collider so we can't actually see our spawn area. This is the only way we can see that it exists. Alright, let's go and open up the other file that we're going to make. Yes, I've made AI move. And here it is. Just going to talk through AI move rather than sitting there typing it together. And we're grabbing the AI spawner we made before. We're going to put it in a variable that we're calling m underscore AI manager. This is the stuff that we're going to be able to call the public variables and public methods that we made a minute ago. So um, down here, we've got a private ball for has target and this is basically to say that have we locked on to a target and this private ball is to say are we currently turning um, or need to turn however we're going to say it so these two here these vector 3 waypoint and this vector 3 last waypoint are basically so we don't hit the same waypoint twice later on we'll check to make sure that the new waypoint is different than the last one and if it's the same then we'll just ask for a new waypoint here we've got um, our animator for our fishy and this is the speed that we'll be playing with the animator and moving the fish so that both the animation and the movement will go at the same speed and when we instantiate our NPC which is the fish in our case straight after we add the component for the AI move and that means that this void start kicks off so whatever we put in here basically um, happens as soon as our fish enters the scene so we've got the AI manager we get from the parent of our NPC, which is the group, and we look in his parent, so get component in parent, and the, we get the AI spawner. And we're getting the M underscore animator, which is the animator on our NPC, on our fish. And we're going to use this setup NPC method, which is nice and neat. And in here I put this scale, which is a random 0 to 4, and then we'll just randomly get a size of our fish. And the X and the Z um, or the one and the Z have the same size and the X is about one and a half times bigger than the other two sides. But in my case that's how I wanted all my fish to be a little bit weird size. Mixes it up a little bit. And down here we've got our void update. And before we talk about the void update I just want to talk about this method I made called can find target. As you see I like to make lots of methods and then use those um, in here rather than fill up my update and my start with a load of code. It just makes it easier for me to make changes later on. So in the can fight target I've got two optional parameters which is the start and the end and um, we've got here um, starting it with one and seven by four but you can change this when you call this method and then we get the waypoint which is a random waypoint that we had in our um, AI spawner. Remember that method we made which was just randomly getting a waypoint and now we check to make sure that the last waypoint and the current waypoint, which is what we've in here, which is this one here, they're not the same. Because if they're the same, then you're basically going to the same waypoint and you won't move. If it is the same, then we're just going to say, look, give us a new waypoint. So we're calling that again, we're getting a random waypoint. And then we return false. Otherwise, we're going to say, um, yep, the last waypoint is now the new waypoint. And we're going to set our speed, which is the random range from the start to the end and we're going to make our animator speed use the same speed as that one and then we're going to return true because we found our waypoint don't forget because it's a ball you need to always have an exit 
Um, so if I've got an if here and an else, both of them need to have a return. Otherwise, it will get an error. I'll show you what I mean. So if I just give it a that. Where is he? Now, look, see, he's all confused. It says not all code paths return a value. So let's bring it back in. All right, so back up here. And in our update, we say, hey, m underscore has target. Are you false? And because we've got an exclamation mark. If he is false, then we say, okay, let's go and find a target. Because basically, if you don't have a target, you need a target, don't you? Otherwise, we've got here our else. What is that indented over there? That's better, nice and tidy. Say else, which means we do have a target. We now need to get to our target. So if you found a target, make sure you can get to your target. So we need to rotate. So we rotate our NPC to face our target. And I'll show you that down in a second. And then we do transform.position, vector three, move towards, um, this is our current position. And we move towards our waypoint at the speed times delta time, or time dot delta time. So what is this rotate NPC all about? Let's get back down to the bottom. And we say rotate NPC, we need a vector three, which is gonna be our waypoint that we're gonna look at. And we're getting the current speed and your turn speed float is the current speed times a random number between one and three. And that's so when you do turn, you turn faster than your normal moving. So you know when you see fish and they, and they turn, they tend to turn quicker than, than they move. Slightly, it can be one the same speed, or it could be three times quicker. And then we've got this vector free lookout. So this is the um, destination of where we want to look at. So that's our waypoint that we set and minus our current position. We've got transform dot rotation and that equals a continuum slurp. We've got here our rotation of our current rotation and we've got the look at where we want to look at. And then we've got our turn speed multiplied by time delta time. And we've put it as a method so that whenever we do need to rotate an NPC to look at something, we can just call rotate NPC. We don't even need to move to it. We can just rotate and survey something we need in the future. It's clever, isn't it? That's why we stick all these methods so we can just reuse them later. Okay, and then we're back in here in our update, and we're saying that if transform.position equals equals my waypoint, which means you've reached your waypoint, then you don't have a target anymore. Set that target to false, and then when it goes through the update again, then it will look and run through the whole thing again. I picked up this free carp from the asset store, it's from Ninjinfinjide. NNJ3DE to be precise. So thank you for giving us a free fishy on the asset store. Thanks to this guy, we can now have fish swimming about in our scene. Inside Unity, as you can see, I've added more waypoint cubes. All I did was I just duplicated the cube and just moved it about a bit randomly just to give us some more waypoints for our fishies to swim to. Now, the reason why I'm using uh, fixed waypoints like these is because maybe I specifically have areas of interest that I want the fishies to swim to, like it could be a little coral reef or something, or it could be a house for an NPC human to walk to. It could be anything. Okay, so I imported in our fishies into the scene, and I've made three prefabs of the fish. I made a yellow fish, a red fish, and a blue fish. And if I go to the lake, you can see that gizmo color that we had before in our code. And here we've got um, the global stats. So let me just hide this, minimize the waypoints one. We've got the global stats. And I've set the spiner, uh, the spiner, we set the spawner to five seconds. And the spawn area is 20 by 8 by 20. That's what this size. Look, I'll show you if I change this now to 30. See, it's bigger. So let's put it back to 20. And if we open up the AI object, you can see I've got three groups I want to spawn. And I've got the blue carp in one, and I've got it enable spawn is true, randomized stats is not true, so that is set to maximum spawn of 10, and that's per spawn of cycle, it will spawn 10 at the maximum. And this max AI, so the most I can own, ever have from this group is 30 in a scene. And this max spawn, this spawn rate, we haven't actually used it yet in any code because we're using this global spawn timer. 
Uh, we can use that later, do some code for that one. And the red carp, we've got here red carp, and this one I've set to random white stats. So enable spawn is still ticked, otherwise it won't actually spawn. And we've got random white stats, so then these will get randomed. And the yellow carp, I've got here enable spawner, and I want to set it to not so many yellows, maybe 15 yellows, and 10 at a time as well. Okay, let's click play. Right, we've got no errors, and I've left the boxes on so you can see the fish are going to be swimming to the waypoints. And as they get to our waypoint, it turns and it goes to another waypoint. It doesn't look very realistic, does it? It doesn't have that randomness that we come to expect from real life. And also, the fish are just popping into each other and going through each other. Alright, let's add a collider um, logic in there, so a raycast. If we go to our carps, I do actually have a mesh collider already on my fish. Mesh collider, there we go. And I've inflated it a little bit so it's not so polyed intensive. So um, don't forget you've got to drag in your mesh into a mesh collider or you can just use a box collider. And let's go back into our code. All right, back into the code. Up at the top here, we want to add a couple of more privates. All right, let's add a collider, so m underscore collider, and a raycast here for m underscore hit. Down here in the setup NPC, let's add our m underscore collider. And to do that, we're going to check to see if this object that we've got this script on has a collider, or if it doesn't, if it has a child that has a collider, we'll add that to this m underscore collider. There you go. So we've got transform dot get collider uh, transform dot get component collider is not null and it's enabled. Is that true? Then we're going to just m underscore collider is that collider from the get component. Else if if component in children has a collider, so it's not null and that collider is enabled, then we're going to get that component collider as the m underscore collider. That's what that does. Okay, and now we need to do some magic for actually what to happen once we collide, now that we have our colliders on our NPCs. And I'm not sure why we've got this raycast here up here. Actually, let's get rid of this, because that's going to be inside the method that we're going to call in a minute. Okay, let's go down, make some space here in front of the can find target. And here's my method. It's collided NPC. We've got a raycast hit, some physics to say when the front of our collider is hit. And we're going to ignore if um, it registers the collider itself or the tag for waypoint. So if it hits one of our waypoints that has um, the collider on it, then it will just basically return out of this uh, method and nothing will happen. Otherwise, we want it to return back saying that it has no target and that will mean that we will go back and we'll find a new target. Now this bit here, this random num and this range between 1 and 100, and if random num is less than 40, it's basically saying that not every time we collide, we're going to set our target to false. And so randomly, we'll have some fish that when they do bump into each other, they just carry on, and some fish when they bump into something, they will move. Gives us a little bit more of a random randomness to it. I'll put a debug log down here just to prove that it does work. So we've got um, transform on the parent name because I forget our mesh collider is on the child of the main fish and then we'll just put the position of what got hit in our debug log. So we'll see that in the console and we've run our little test. Oh yeah, that's fun isn't it? And now we need to grab this NPC collided NPC and put him in the start, uh, not in the start, in the update rather, and we'll put him just under here. Oops, there, like that. So let's put a nice comment. Now we check if collided, if yes, then we'll lose the target and look for a new waypoint. Nice, simple enough, isn't it? Okay, now let's see if it works. Fingers crossed, are you excited? I'm excited, here's our fishies swimming around. Remember, there's about a 40% chance that our fish, if they bump into each other, are actually going to move. And 
We've got a few that have kicked off down here. Quite a few actually. And there they are. They are weaving more naturally. It is more natural. It's still not good enough though, is it? It's still not um, entirely random. Let's make use of that, get the, uh, the random vector 3 that we created a bit earlier, which we used to spawn our fish in. And we can use that to spawn random waypoints instead of using these fixed waypoints. And like everything, we'll just stick it in a method and we can flick between the two. What do you reckon? Yep, let's do it. Let's do that. All right, let's go back into our code. Okay, we're back in. Let's go down here to can find target. And just before can find target, we'll put in my code, click pause. There you go. And it's a vector three that we're going to return. And we're going to be um, getting a parameter for our, well, an argument for our vector three method. And it's going to be is random. And if that's true, then we use the random position method from the AI manager or the AI spawner that we use for spawning. If it's false, then we will go to a random waypoint again from the random waypoint method in the AI manager. Okay, simple enough. Uh, we could use this actually in a ball on the uh, inspector on the actual AI group, and then you could control it that way. You could turn it on and off if you wanted. So you could have some spawn who go to set a set waypoint, and some who spawn go randomly. Yeah, All right. that sounds cool. We'll add um, this here. Okay, and manually just put in true. Okay, and now we do save and we'll go into Unity and we'll see how different that looks. Right, let's clear out our console from before. Have we got any errors? No errors. Click play. Now you should be just going randomly and not to those boxes. And they do. Oh, there you go. And those boxes are just ignored now. They'll just swim through them, swim by them. Looks like they're not even there. Nice. Okay. Now we've got the big test. Let's hide those boxes. Let's call the kids in and see what they think. All right, boys, are you ready to see the fishies? Yeah. Yeah? Theo, are you ready? Yeah. Yes. You ready? Are you ready? Okay, let's see the fishies. Can you see them? Yeah. No! <laughs> no. <laughs> this is a lot. <laughs> Theo, stop squeaking. <laughs> You're going to scare the fishies. Don't squeal, you're going to scare the fishies. Look, he's scaring the fishies. What are the fishies doing? Eating the food. They're eating the food in the water? Yeah. Stop. Yeah. The fishies are going to get all scared from the squeaking. It's catchy, Mummy. Oh, he's not Mummy, darling. It's Daddy. Yeah. It's catchy. Alright, should we say bye-bye to the fishies? And guys, if you like these videos, do appreciate all your help when you spread the word and tell your friends and family and your neighbours and random people on the street. Let's get up to that 10,000 subs. Let's break that extra zero. So do tweet, do follow me on Facebook. All your messages on YouTube have been fantastic. So guys, thanks a lot for all your support. And if you do like it, click it. Until next time. Bye-bye, fishies. We paint the fishies. Mommy. Yeah, don't eat the fishies, mommy. Oh, okay. If you want to see more on the Ultimate Survival Series, click on the links on the left side of your screen. And if you like these videos and you want to see more of them, please click subscribe. It's in that big button that's down below. And there's next to it, there's a little magic bell. And when you click that bell, it tells you when there's a new video out. So cheers, thanks for all the support.